Hi everyone, welcome to our new Chaotix. Today is February 1st and you're at the onboarding session for Chaos. We are so happy to see you. I'm Elizabeth, I'm the Chaos Community Manager. I'm based in the States in Ohio. Um, as we were talking about earlier, all the Ohio memes are absolutely true. So yes, you can have a good laugh because we are laughing as well. <laughs> um, and I will also let Ruth introduce herself as well. Hi everyone, um, sorry my camera is not on. I'm having a very Saturday. day. <laughs> but, um, um, I'm the community lead for Chaos Africa, the chapter, uh, one of the local chapters of Chaos. And yeah, I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria. Fortunately, we don't have, we don't have Lagos memes. <laughs> Maybe. I, I, just, I just want to match with what it is method. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, um, this is the onboarding call and we're excited to have every one of you here. And yeah, you can get started. I'm going to share. So the purpose of this meeting today, if you're not sure, is to um, basically just kind of go over everything chaos. So if you have any questions at all, um, you can either raise your hand or you can drop them in the chat. Totally fine. And obviously you do not need to have your camera on. It can be on or off. What we're super uh, flexible and formal here. So whatever you're comfortable with, we're comfortable with. So there you go. Um, again, I'm Elizabeth and um, we're just gonna jump right into it. So so chaos, the, um, anac the an acronym, is that right? Yeah, acronym, yeah, that's the right word. Stands for Community Health Analytics Open Source Software. So that's a lot. We are focused mostly on uh, analyzing community health in a variety of ways, and we do have a few different um, software packages that are open source and that will help you do that. So we're gonna jump, we'll, we'll jump into all of that stuff uh, in a minute. Um, Chaos, the project, is under the Linux Foundation, so we um, get support from them. We kind of have to follow their guidelines um, for, for good or bad, <laughs> but they're super, they've been really supportive of our, of our project, so we're really grateful. Um, they help us out with things like um, legal advice and um, trademarking, and they were helping us with the website. We kind of took that over, but they do offer support to their projects that are under them, so we appreciate them very much. We're also funded by uh, a few different places, mostly this Alfred P. Sloan Foundation and Ford Foundation. So that's how Chaos um, it sustains itself is through grants. Um, we are in the process of trying to get the next round of, of funding. So uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's where we that's how we sustain ourselves mostly. Chaos came about, I think, five years ago um, at a conference called FOSTEM, which is actually happening this week in Brussels. Um, they, uh, a bunch of people got together and just started talking about it. They had a, I think it's called a birds of a feather session, where they just wanted to talk about this idea of measuring community health. And so that's kind of where this all came from. And it turns out there, there are really four groups of folks that, that care about community health. Um, open source contributors want to know that, you know, the places where they're spending their time and their energy are healthy, awesome places to be and that they're able to feel empowered and feel good about um, contributing to the to the project. Open source communities are trying to be as healthy as possible because they want to attract new members and make sure that their code is up to up to standards and that they're lowering risk and, and thinking about all the things that they should be thinking about. And then open source companies, of course, are wanting to open source projects or contribute to open source projects that are healthy. They certainly don't want to uh, uh, advocate for toxic, unhealthy communities, right? Like they don't want that to be associated with their name. So they care about how their projects are going and the projects that they depend on. They wanna make sure that they're healthy and vibrant and will sustain themselves throughout and not just uh, fold and go away. Um, and then, of course, open source foundations want to make sure that they are, if they are funding a project, that they're funding a good one that is is healthy and then cares about um, measuring and tracking community health. So those are really the four groups of folks um, that we kind of speak to. Um, so like I said, chaos kind of came together. Um, the goal is to um, develop metrics, which uh, me metrics, methodologies, and software 
for tracking and, and keeping track of uh, open source project health and sustainability. And we'll talk about the different ways that we do that in a minute. Um, so our project structure is really has a couple of different facets and it's it's kind of confusing i know because we're not your typical open source project that just has this software component right we have a, a we have several components two of which are our software and the metrics that we um, we develop here so on the software side we have two main open source projects that help gather the data from the metrics and display it to whoever wants to see it. So it's a community manager, it's maybe an OSPO, it's maybe a, a company, whoever wants to see it. Um, Grimoire Lab is the first one and Augur is the second one. And I will do my best to tell you the, the main differences between them. Um, Augur, and I, I could be a little off, but this is my personal feeling about them. <laughs> so um, Augur is really good at analyzing a ton of repositories. So if you're a project and you're a big project and you have 10,000 repositories, literally, Augur can take all of that data and get it from GitHub and, and crunch it down and spit it back out into some charts for you. They're really good at doing that. I would say Grimoire Lab is a little more um, nuanced in the display. They're certainly more um, kind of advanced in the, the, the way it, the data comes back to you and what it looks like. Um, the charts are prettier. <laughs> They're a little easier to read. Um, so yeah, but they, they can do a lot with, a, I would say, smaller repositories or gathering information from a wider variety of sources. So like Discourse and Slack and all these other places, they can, you can all put it all together in one place. Um, Ruth, would you add anything to that? Yeah, I, I think I think it did really good. I try. I don't know. <laughs> I will also just mention too um, that the uh, the Grimoire Lab project is a part of Biturgia, so they're they're the, it's a company and they kind of um sell services based on Grimoire Lab. So they have a core group of folks that continually work on that project and they they care a lot about <laughs> you know making sure that it's it's going and it's you know because it's sustaining uh, obviously you know a, a large chunk of their business. And Ruth is um an open source consultant for Biturgio. There are also quite a few chaos folks um that are floating around uh or, or I should say quite a few Biturgio folks that float around chaos. Um, some of our founders of the project are, work for Biturgia as well. So um, you will see that name a lot. <laughs> um, and then I will also say Augur is run by a professor. His name is Sean Goggins, and you will also see his name a lot in the Chaos Project. He's the co-director of our board. He's one of the founders. Um, and he, this is kind of like his brainchild, <laughs> is the Augur Project. And so he, he involves a lot of his students that come through his computer science classes. Um, we have a lot of students from mentorships that come through Augur as well and contribute. So you have more of a, I don't know, maybe more of a transient uh, contribution base to that project. And so it's a little bit um, less evolved, I would say, than the Grimoire Lab project. Just because we, we do have so many folks that work on it, it's, um, you know, there's a lot going on with Augur. Um, our goal is to so right now a lot of the auger information is in sean's head <laughs> so so if people have questions it's usually like let's go ask sean well he's one person so you know what are one of our goals is to try to kind of distribute that knowledge that's in his head out across the community a little better so we're always updating those those um, documents installation and i know some of you on the call have uh, have had some issues with installation and going through those docs so please at any time if you see something that could be improved in those docs or a screenshot like anything that will make it easier for the next person coming along by all means feel free to um, join the auger channel and and reach out and try to uh, make those things better for the folks that are coming behind you we would really appreciate that um uh, let me see here i'm going to stop for a second because i see some questions over here so i'm going to address them let me just scroll up a little bit uh, are the software metrics models only available through Grimoire Lab and Augur? Is there ability to consume a metric without a dashboard view? Okay, we will, Renisha, that is, those are excellent questions. And I think we will probably hit on those once we get to the individual metrics, where we start talking about them a little bit more. 
Um, and then <laughs> Anurag says, where is Sean nowadays? He's traveling. He's on his way to FOSDEM and ChaosCon. So yeah, he's a little bit out of pocket and um, there's probably going to be a delay in his response. <laughs> so that's where he is. Um, I will also stop here to see if there are any other questions about these two projects. All right, well, let's move on. So now let's talk about our metrics themselves. Um, we have some different working groups that right now focus on not only developing the metrics, but also having these high level conversations about what kind of questions are we trying to answer? And what, what do we need to, to look at? What data do we need to answer those questions? Um, traditionally, chaos has taken the approach of a uh, question metric data flow. So we start with the question that we're trying to answer. We figure out what kind of a metric we would need to answer that question, metric or metrics. And then we figure out how to get that data to, to solve that problem. So, um, risk our risk working group looks mostly at things that would pose a risk to the project um, so they're looking at things like dependencies they're looking at things like licensing or testing in the project um, any of those kinds of issues so if you think about um just as an aside if you think about your your body and your the health of your body like there are a lot of different ways you can measure that right there's a lot of different numbers you can take your weight your blood pressure your heart rate your you know all those different things and so um you know each you have specialists you have doctors who look at different pieces of your body and that's kind of what our working groups do if you want to look at think about it that way so um you know somebody's looking at eyes somebody's looking at ears um kind of taking taking those that expertise there and and really deep diving into what those metrics look like our dei group looks at uh diversity equity and inclusion so we're looking at things like w where are your contributors coming from are you a global community or are you all you know focused in one city in san francisco for instance or you know where, where are your folks where are they coming from uh, what kinds of contributions are they giving to your project? Is it all just software or is it, you know, is there, are there opportunities for non-code contributions? How do newcomers feel when they come to your project? Or do they feel safe? How is the project attending to burnout from the maintainers and, and, con and uh, contributors? So those kinds of things that are a little more nuanced and a little harder to measure or harder to kind of get that number that like that's not something that github can tell you right like so um we have some like really deep conversations in that group um and it's a really interesting group to be a part of um evolution looks at the life cycle of the project so they're looking at things like um are our contributors growing are our um issues you know are we getting more issues over time are we maturing are we kind of leveling out is that okay is that where we want to be um, looking at all of those things, um, or is our project, you know, declining? Are we stagnant? Are we um, not not vibrant any longer? So um, that's what that group focuses on. Um, our OSPO group is a newish group for us. Um, we, we pivoted it from a different um, perspective. And so now it's just a group of folks who work in OSPOs. Os and OSPO stands for uh, Open Source Program Office. So they work for companies that are running these offices and they come together to talk about like the kinds of questions they're trying to answer, the kinds of things they care about, what metrics they're, they're using to do that. Um, so for instance, um, you know, someone at Google, who uh, Google has a ton of open source projects that they run themselves. So there's, there are people there that are in charge of making sure that those projects are healthy and that they're projects that people want to contribute to, want to use, want to be a part of, so that you know Google can be proud to have those projects, just for as an example. Um, and then we have our common group, and that looks at metrics that are maybe common to more than one, um, more than one group. So um, for instance, one metric they just released was um, software release frequency. So it's kind of something that, you know, evolution might care about, risk might care about, OSPO might care about, um, because if you have a regular cadence of releases, then maybe that signifies some things about your project that it, maybe it's more stable, maybe it's a little more mature, maybe it's like something that people can count on. Um, so uh, that is a metric that Common just released, for instance. And then finally, we have our metrics models, which aims to take these individual 
data points from these other working groups, and it brings them together in a, in a way that is answering deeper questions. So for instance, one of our metrics models might be welcomingness. So welcomingness is this like kind of uh, more ambiguous thing that we will take, we will pull different metrics from different groups to kind of answer that question. How welcoming, quote unquote, is your community? So you would look at things like maybe response time. Are they you know, responding to people <laughs> in a timely manner? Um, like maybe you would look at things like the licensing of the project. Is it licensed in a way that folks can, can feel good about contributing or is it very restrictive? And that's like maybe something they don't wanna be a part of. Um, it looks at maybe things like um, language inclusivity. If you know, there's um, maybe some toxic language being used in the project. Um, so, you know, there's a whole different, uh, a, 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 several different metrics that can come together to kind of build this bigger picture. Um, and that's what the metrics models group does. And I, I mentioned this earlier um, that, you know, traditionally chaos has been focused on these individual metrics. Like, let's just figure out all the different ways we can measure community health. And as we've, we've grown and matured, we're kind of evolving into looking more deeper now. You know, we've, we have, I think, 75 different metrics, and we will still continue to develop more because obviously you can, I mean, there's still more that we haven't even thought of yet. So um, we're very, you know, dependent on the community to come in and help us figure out what, what we're missing and what we still need to add. But um, we're also kind of looking more at these like metric models of like, how can we pull these numbers together to create that bigger picture? Or in the case of, you know, like your body, you would want to maybe look at a whole bunch of different, like you would look at your weight and your blood pressure and your heart rate all together. And that is gonna tell you if, if you're healthy, quote unquote. So, whew, that was a lot. I'm gonna stop and <laughs> see if folks have questions about any of that. It's been awesome, there are no questions. <laughs> um, oh, and to, to just address um, Renisha's comment earlier, um, are the software metrics models only available through Grimoire Lab and Augur? No, you can pull them however you want. Um, these metrics models will have different uh, ways you can implement them. So if you want to just pull it, if there are things like that are coming just from GitHub, you can just go straight to GitHub and pull them however you want um, with your own code using the GitHub API, for instance. Um, and is there an ability to consume a metric without a dashboard view um, by a clean line of tool or an API? Yes. So yeah, um, most, uh, to be perfectly frank, Augur and Grimoire Lab are pulling those from the API straight. So if you just wanted to just skip that and write your own code that would grab those from the API, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, these uh, metrics um, are really designed just to kind of help you think about what, what considerations you should have when measuring this thing. So um, actually we can just look at a metric really quick if you all want. I don't know if we have time to do that. Sorry, uh, Ruth, but hang on one second. I just want to show everybody like what one of the metrics looks like. So we'll come here and we'll look at, these are our, this is our metrics page, by the way, and this has all our metrics and metrics models. And I'll drop that here in the chat. Uh, just in case you want to poke through. Um, and they're arranged by topic area. So you'll notice too, we've kind of also gone away. We used to have them all organized this way, but that's not how folks consume them, right? Like they don't know what working group we're making the metric in. So that's not super helpful. So we've switched just recently to this more of like topic areas. Like, okay, I care about um, things around governance and leadership. That's what I'm uh, focusing on right now for whatever reason. And so I'm gonna look at this code of conduct for a project. And here's this metric. So this is the question we were trying to answer. And these are, here's the description of what that metric is trying to do. Here's the objectives. And then here's how you would implement. And this is one of the cases where we have a metric that you can't get from an API, right? Like this is gonna take a little more effort on the part of the maintainer to get that data. And so we, we offer some data collection strategies, some tools you can use. Um, maybe some survey questions you could use and um, and such. So not all metrics are API based. I should make that very clear. Where, um, I like that view that you just showed. Where does the metrics model part come in? Is there also like a page that shows like the metrics models and the metrics that feed into it? 
Yes, that is an excellent question. So we are in the process of, we only have one out here right now. Um, and actually this is changing. We just, we have a metrics model working group that just met last night. And we were actually struggling with, should we release the metrics model if we don't have all the included metrics developed yet? And so we were kind of struggling with that a little. And I think we landed on that. Yeah, we would go ahead and, oh yeah, we changed this last night. So it's not showing up. Okay, action item to Elizabeth. <laughs> Check this metrics model. We changed the name of the um, of the metric. And so it's not linking properly now, but we'll look at that. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I can show you the web, the, uh, we have a spreadsheet um, that we use for tracking all of our metrics. So obviously this isn't super helpful to put on the website, but it is helpful for us internally to keep track of them all. So I can show you what that looks like over here. Um, these are the ones that, you know, we're ready, but we're maybe missing a couple of the metrics inside of them. This code quality guarantee, that's the one we just changed last night to collaboration development index. So I just need to go tweak that PR that we made. But here's what essentially what the metric looks like. It looks like uh, this, and here are the metrics inside this metrics model. So we're looking at contributors, we're looking at downloads, code changes, commits, and uh, CI test is a new one for us, as is change requests, link with issues, things like that. So um, you can also actually see these on GitHub in our metrics model working group. Uh, yeah. It's a little bit maybe easier to see them here. So this is what we're looking at. So you can see we are missing a few of these metrics. Download, CI test. So that was what we were struggling with yesterday. And we decided to go ahead and just release it. And then as we develop these metrics, we'll, li we'll link them in. Got it. This is fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And just so folks know, the, the we do have a plugin that pulls this straight from GitHub and puts it on our website. But because we changed the name, that link got broken. So I will fix that. <laughs> it will it will happen. It will happen. I promise. Um, OK, uh, let's go back over here. Yeah, I think we have two more questions. I'll just go oh, up. awesome. Yeah. How do yeah. participants join individual groups and participate? And are they requirements to be part of these groups? Excellent question. Um, so we have a calendar of all of the meetings. Each of those working groups has weekly or biweekly meetings. Um, and um, our whole calendar, you can just show up to a meeting. That, that's all it takes to, to participate is just to show up to a meeting and just say, yeah, I'm here. Um, the, the calendar is here which I will also put in the chat. And if you if you are kind of interested in like risk, for instance, you're like, yeah, I care about those things. Um, then you can just show up to the meeting. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. You can just listen. Um, in fact, you know, that's kind of a, a good way to kind of just get the feel, get the vibe of the, of the meeting and just, you know, feel like maybe a little more comfortable. Um, and that's really it. You just have to, uh, oops, you just have to show up. <laughs> so, um, okay, Josh, we'll see you later. You can catch the rest of this recording if you want later on. Thank you for, for showing up. We'll see you later. Bye. Okay, so the other question about, I think that was really asked about um, how users can leverage, I read that users can leverage allgrown.io to make the most of the more labs. This is the standard practice of peers. So Cauldron, Cauldron is um like a SaaS tool built on top of Primo Lab. Um and that's that's built by um Bitegia, right? So I, I know it has like a free offering as well, but I'm not sure if Chaos directly uses Cauldron to be fair. Yeah, for, for chaos ourselves, like for when we yeah. look at data, I I personally don't, but that's just because I'm maybe one of those uh, like 
do as I say, not as I do <laughs> kind of thing. So like as the community manager, I should be super on top of all of these. I should be, I should have all this data flowing in at all times. Codon is managed directly by Bitergia. So I think maybe that's why. Yeah, I think they do have an instance for chaos. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the instance is for the internal one, the BAP platform, the one built on top of Granola. So there are so many things built on top of Granola, but Cauldron is like a SaaS tool that was built on top of Granola as well. So it, all, it also has like a free um, free offering to as as long as other tiers, but it also has like a free offering that, that users can use. So I'm not sure we have an instance for the Cauldron in Chaos. Bruce, and I have to apologize. I cannot remember where we did the handoff. So if I went into your space, I'm very yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, I think on project, like the slide 10, that's okay. where. Awesome. <laughs> I was just thinking like, oh no, was Ruth just to go over that stuff? I'm really sorry. Um, I will go here now. Commu okay, community initiatives. I will let Ruth take it from here. Yeah, sure. Um, so thank you, Elizabeth, for doing the awesome job. Um, so we, Apart from the working groups, the um, software and also metrics, we also have community initiatives that, you know, have come out of um, the metrics that we create here at Chaos. So um, the first one, the DI badging initiative, um, it came from the um, DI, bad, the DI working group um, that Elizabeth talked about before. So the idea um, when the initiative started was um, we're thinking about how we would, um, you know, represent these metrics that we have been creating in chaos in the DI budget, in DI working group in real life. And, you know, that initiative started in um, 2020 um, and it's it started in two sections for events, open source conferences and events where we we'll think about badging um, conferences, open source conferences and events that, you know, recognize them for being diverse and inclusive and also projects. Um, but we started with events um, since 2020 and we are shaping up for like, we are, we are starting to um, think about the project badging. So that's one initiative and that has really been successful in chaos as well. And it's, it also has like its own meeting um, we have a lot of meetings in chaos, but <laughs> this the badging initiative also has its own meeting, and we also have like a team. So the event badging part of that initiative runs as an applicant or an open source conference. Um, say for example, um, force them would apply to chaos or the DI badging initiative to um for a badge for a DI badge, and we have reviewers that we call badgers that kind of go through what the applicant has put in we asked a couple of questions and these questions or the application um came out from the metrics different metrics that we've created i don't know if elizabeth you could show uh, maybe one of the um yeah so um this would be the application oh let's just pretend we're going to do an in-person event yeah so we are like an, an organizer and then you come filling details and you can see each of the sections are based on metrics um, that we've created in the DI working group, like event demographics, um, inclusive experience at events. So the applicant would see how they attend to each of these um, different things. And when the when the applicant submits, it triggers up and opens up an issue. We have a GitHub repository where we kind of like manage the process. Um, we have, it, it triggers up that issue on the repository, open, this was the issue. Um, yeah, so for example, um, this is that one here. So we have this um, summit, Cassandra summit, such a nice one. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we have this event, right? The applicants are filled in like how they attend the event demographic, the event, inclusive experience. And when you open up this issue, we have reviewers, like human reviewers um, that um, are assigned to this issue and then they um, kind of give them like generate we have a bot an awesome bot that kind of generates a checklist um, just attending to each of these questions we've asked the um, the applicants and they check okay this 
um, went about is open source, it's um, publicly available. So we have like a list of checklists that the, um, the viewers will go through. And after the process, we have that book as well that can collect the, the results, right? Depending on you know, the checks, um, it's, it's an automated process. We just have to trigger the after the bot has done that, we, after the viewers are done, we just have to trigger the bot to collect that um, result and then award the bad. We have like three levels, the gold bad, silver bad, and uh, pending bad. So once that is all done, we inform the organizer that we now have the badge. And usually um, you might ask how this, or what to use the badges are. It's, so usually we see event organizers, aside the fact that we get to influence um, the process, right? Um, you know, we give them feedback on their events and some of them go back to improve on you know, their diverse and inclusive measures. They also show these um, badges on their website, put them on their website as well. So these are all the events that we've badged in the past three years. We are, we are getting to a hundred events so far. Um, so lot of events here so we have that team that kind of like does all the work here and going back to the slides so that's um events budget but for project budget we are still we are still um working on that so it's coming up very soon but the, the focus for project budget is um you know reviewing and budgeting project open source projects that are diverse and inclusive so that's that. And also we have local chapters, and which is something very um, cool and interesting. We have we call we have two local chapters, um, Chaos Africa and the uh, Chaos Asia Pacific. So those two local chapters too are places where people can get involved in their local region. We are hoping that this year we would have more chapters. <laughs> Hopefully, um, so if you. And if you want to open up a new chapter in different, I think I think this we're talking about Australia or something, <laughs> right? Mostly just because I want to go there, like that. That would be the only reason. <laughs> I mean, and also you know the chaos community, blah blah blah. But mostly, <laughs> yeah. So we have this local chapters, and within this local chapters too, they have like different focus, like projects that are going on, uh, mini projects that they take on. But we are all part of like the larger chaos group, right? But we just have those different um, things that we work on. So if you are in that region, you can also like join the meetings that happen and know what's happening within that chapter. So those are like for the community initiatives. And if you need like more details, our website, you have a lot of information there, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but um, thank you for the party time. Um, it, it can get really overwhelming. Um, even myself, I've been here for three years, but I still find it hard to find something. So, <laughs> so um, take it one step at a time. We have an awesome um page for getting started. Like we kind of like created this page to give um you know newcomers like an overview on you know what to do when they join the community and it's okay to um, come in and want to assess things and stay quiet and kind of like understand how things are going on before you make your first contribution. Um, we are definitely here. That's why this um, onboarding call is here every month to kind of like give people an overview on, you know, chaos and how we do things and where they can get involved in. So you can always look at this get started guide. We also have a community handbook. Um, let's see if you could show that. So yeah, so this is the community um, handbook. There are a lot of like different things here, like more details on the overview we've given about chaos, the community initiatives and working groups, and you can get involved. And I think someone, um, going back to a question that someone asked if there are requirements to be part of any working group, there are no requirements, just, um, Pick the one that feels. I think uh, for me, I I when I joined um, Chaos, I I could relate well to the DEI working group because um, you know come like I was from I'm from an underrepresented background, so I wanted to shape how the metrics you know participate in the metrics, and I felt I I I I fit in there better. So 
just look at the metric, the, the work, different working groups. Um, you know, with this overview, you can look at what each of them focuses on. And if you scroll down this um, doc, you see even like, I, I don't think this slide has what each working group focuses on, but if you check here, you'd see like those different things. So you can just pick which of them you want to and just attend the meetings. And usually in these meetings, they're like, sometimes they're like action items that go around, maybe create a doc, maybe work on an issue. So usually there are some action items and you can pick up any of the action items or indicate interest to pick up any of the action items. And usually I think when we open good first issues, we just like post it on the chaos, the newcomer channel and like, so definitely um, we, and, and I think this call is going to have one issue because we are trying to migrate this um this are uh, awesome slide to a uh, new slide so i'm going to open up an issue and share on the newcomer channel maybe someone can pick it up we have like a new slide design so want to move it so yeah so that's that's the i think that's the end elizabeth you have you have gone past <laughs> where, where you were a good ball up okay yeah so you can how to get involved you can choose to participate with software. We have Grimoire Lab or Augur. So you can, if you're, and, and these two software that builds um, with Python. So if you write Python, you know, to be good. So I think some component of Augur to like the front end part is with Vue, if I'm not mistaken. So you can also get involved there um, as well. Um, for metrics, you can get involved in the metrics, you can participate in a working group. That's supposed to be working group. <laughs> Typo there. Um, so yeah, and you can also participate in a local chapter. We also have um our social media. Yeah, sure, we can share the presentation. This best. We'll share the presentation. Um, we also have like social media um Twitter channels, and we record all of our meetings. We are we're very open, so we record all of our meetings and we put it on the YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. So if you search for chaos, you'd see any meeting you miss, you'd see um, like a recording that we posted there. Um, so we are here to help you. If you have any question, anything at all, feel free to add me or Elizabeth or even in the newcomers channel. I'm definitely love to help you get started. So thank you for staying with us, um, I think. I think that's it. Do folks have any question? You know, I'm, as as we're talking here, I'm I'm thinking one thing that might be helpful for us to put somewhere is the uh, the languages that those software projects use. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. I don't know that we really have that documented anywhere. So like if someone is a Python de developer, okay, well, let, point me towards the, you know, the Python-y things. <laughs> or if you're, you know, JavaScript, like point me to the JavaScript-y things. So maybe that's something we could add somewhere. Yeah, I think maybe if you check, maybe on the community handbook, I think something like that. Do we have something in here? Would it be under how to contribute or would it be more up under? Check how to contribute. Let's try, let's look. I don't I mean, know why think, that looked weird too. Like the font was all weird there. I don't know why. I think we don't have the need to put that because on GitHub, under every repo, there is a section where it details how much of a particular language is used. Yeah. So yeah, if, a, if a new person is coming to contribute, then generally we'll go to the repo and he'll yeah. search through the repos and he can find, he or she can find it there, the languages that are used. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like here. Yeah, that, I feel like that would be helpful, maybe uh, surfaced a little more, like just so, you, you know, as a newcomer, because we have like 110 repositories or something at Chaos, so you don't have to like look at every single one. Um, so maybe we could do a better job of like, here are the, here are the technologies that we use for this software. Should we put that in maybe how, how to contribute? Yeah, I think, I think that could fit in how to contribute. I think that's... I think it's somewhere it's a, like it's somewhere but I can't remember. <laughs> Development contributions. Let's look at that. Oh hey, here we go. Oh, yes, there it is. We're so smart. I didn't even see this is the thing. Like I don't even know we had this in here. Go us. 
Good for, we did a good job here. I didn't even know. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, and we can update this with the um, newer, like the Slack bot project and the badging bot project. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I think that is not here. Yeah. Okay, awesome. We all learned something today. <laughs> Show us. Uh, what other questions do you all have? So quiet. Oh, Wait, so I, I guess I have one. Um, you mentioned there's an office hours um, that y'all have. Like, what sort of things can we bring to office hours? Anything you want, literally anything. Um, usually it's Ruth and I, maybe a few others just hanging out there all, all hour and it's come and go as you want. You could pop in and ask a quick question and then leave. You could hang out with us. I mean, we literally talk about everything in that because <laughs> it's just a hangout. So um, yeah, if you want to talk about things other than chaos, we're more than happy to do that too. <laughs> Aren't we Ruth? <laughs> yeah, sure. So it happens, I think, um... I'm going to say my time because, because I'm so bad with time zones. But yeah, me too. It happens um, is it 11 a.m. on Tuesday, um, Central Time. That's, yeah, um, I think this calendar shows it in U.S. Central Chicago time. Um, that's kind of where we centralize everything. So, yeah, that's another thing. When we have daylight savings time here in the U.S., it messes it up for everyone. So, sorry about our goofy country but um i will say the only one that does not follow and this is a new thing is the um asia pacific call they follow ch uh, sh china standard time i believe uh, yeah so they won't move for daylight savings and this happens you know more friendly to that time zone as well so um, but yeah here's the office hours every tuesday you, there's no agenda. It's just, it's the same call you're on right now. You just pop on in and say hello. Yeah, that's it. Easy peasy. And yes, of course, you anybody can ping Ruth or I. Um, we try to recommend that folks ask questions in the newcomer channel or somewhere more public because if you have a question, chances are somebody else probably has the same question. So, um, you know, we, we might direct you more toward just asking it publicly and then we're happy to answer it. Um, also, I want to just mention later today, if you're not in our Slack, you should you should pop in the Slack. Um, I can or maybe Ruth, you can grab a, a link to that. Um, yeah, just sure. want, okay. Um, uh, but we are opening a discourse later today. Actually, we're launching it. So you're, you'll get a message in Slack. We're going to send it to everybody in our Slack, which is like, I don't know, 1100 folks, <laughs> 1100 people. So it's a lot. Hopefully no one gets mad at us, but, um, but we are launching that today. So we can also move some of these conversations to discourse and have them a little, a little easier to find, a little more long term, because Slack is really hard to find conversations about stuff, you know, that doesn't happen today. You know what I mean? Like it just gets buried. So we're trying discourse as a way to replace our uh, old and outdated mailing lists. A discourse is just a forum, a forum uh, software. And so if you've never used discourse before, um, this is kind of what it looks like. You know, it's just a place to like open topics and then you can search a little easier, um, things like that. Let's see if, uh, what is it? Here we go. Here's a little, I'll just drop this link into chat too. Um, so yeah, it's just a forum. Um, and it's like, things are more categorized and no, it's a little different than Discord. Discord is more like um, a chat, uh, like a one-on-one -on -one chat or like a small group chat. Um, but this is more of like, um, I was gonna I just show sustain um, discourse in the microgrid discourse page. Yeah, let me look at, okay, so 
here is their version, like their discourse is that that's their project, but here's their um, support and they use their own software to run their own support. So like you would come on and you'll see like all these different conversations happening. They're like tagged with different things that the thing is about. They're in different categories. So this will kind of look like, ours will look a little bit different than this, um, but you know, it will have different categories. So if, if I wanna talk about it, for instance, something that's going on in the community, um, I would click on community and it looks kind of like this. And then anybody can just start a new topic. Anybody can start you know, one of these and ask their question or just say, hey, I saw this thing. I think it's interesting. What do you all think about it? Kind of a thing. And then um, like, okay, let's look at this. So this is a thread. This is a, com uh, a thread that's going on in this, in this forum. This person says, hey, I came across this article, blah, blah, blah. I want to know what people think about it. And then people can just reply to that thread. And like they can like it, they can link to it, they can pin it, they can do whatever they want with it. So we will have um, a getting started um, document. So I think we are linking to this document here. Um, this is like more of part two, how to how to administer it, but I feel like we had a better link that we're using um, to, to get started, but yeah. You'll see that when we put the um, announcement out, we'll put a getting started link for you too. If you've never used Discourse and you don't, you're not familiar with it at all, we'll, we'll put that out there for you. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. Any other questions? that folks have. Renisha, do you work with uh, Katie then? Yes, so Katie was the one who uh, showed me the calendar because she was like, you should come to the weekly call. I was like, what weekly call? And I was like, well, newcomers. She taught me all the things, so yes, yeah. so I'll do it for Katie. <laughs> we hung out with Katie uh, at a couple of meetings today already, so. <laughs> yeah, we love Katie. She's awesome. Yeah, she's, she's great. She's great. Well, welcome. Welcome, welcome to chaos, everybody. You are now in a, a chaotic, that's what we call ourselves, chaotic, chaotics. So, yes. Um, how do you measure growth and success at chaos? That is a really good question. Um, I have heard this phrase, so I, I'll take a step back. We are very organic <laughs> and fluid here at Chaos, in case you haven't uh, haven't noticed. Like we are really pretty informal and pretty, uh, we try to be as collaborative and open and welcoming as possible. And so there are, um, I've heard, I heard this used, uh, and I just absolutely love this analogy, uh, there are there are people who build empires and there are people who build nests and I would say chaos is much more of a nest builder like we are not here to take over the world we are not here to grow our community to 10,000 people unless that's what it you know that's what organically it, it ends up being um, so measuring growth at, and success at chaos I would say is mostly um, how people feel here and like that's my goal, and I think I would say that that is the goal of most of the folks, the the core folks at Chaos is I care much more about people's experience here, and that is my measure of success. So we um, last year in October we did a survey, a community survey of just like getting the pulse of how are people feeling, what, how can we be better, how can we be more welcoming and inclusive. And so the results of that survey, I think, is as we go over the years, that was our first time running that survey. So that will be, I think, for me personally, that will be our measure of success is if we are able to continue to make a more welcoming community, a more inclusive community, and that people feel good when they come here and they feel like this is a place they want to be, they feel safe and they feel val validated and valued and um, that they're contributing something impactful and meaningful. So. Yeah, 
<laughs> I will say that's not always the case. Really, with um, some open source projects, they're mu much more focused on like how many folks did we bring in, how many folks are sticking around, how many, um, how responsive are we to issues, and you know we do care about those things. Um, but for me, I mostly focus on experience and how people feel when they get here. What would you say, Ruth? What 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 do you have to add to that? Yeah, just I think I think um, I would say we really care, we really invest a lot in DEI, like making people feel inclusive. And you know, we didn't have like we didn't have this onboarding call maybe a year back, right? This is something we need. I would say I think in November, we said it's in November. So we just we keep when when we get feedback, we keep like um, you know, making things easier for people because like we know that like there are a lot of spots digest in chaos so we try to make it better for people and and when we make these things better we get this feedback like today we got awesome feedback too from josh <laughs> even saying um you know, you know like the way we, we are very inclusive right so yeah so when we get this human feedback right we we also like try to make the process better and then you know so i i agree with this breath we are very organic, right? We're very good and success. And I would say that, you know, if we are helping open source maintainers or OSPOs or whoever um, care more and have more visibility and more education around community health and like give them the tools to make changes in their own communities, then I think that's also another measure of success, I will say. Um, is just like making sure that what we're doing is impactful and useful for folks. <laughs> so that's, it kind of feeds into both. Like we, we try to be as welcoming and collaborative as possible so that our metrics are, and our metrics models and our tools and all of the stuff that we produce are as useful and helpful and, um, you know, uh, just as good as they can possibly be. But I think it starts with the community personally. I think it starts with, you know, who shows up and who wants to be here and what they have to give, so. That was a long answer <laughs> to that question, but thank you for asking it. It was a good question. We are almost out of time. Um, so if you all do have any final questions, feel free to pop them in the newcomers channel. Um, and if, if Ruth and I don't answer right away, I'm sure someone will. Like people usually jump in and try to help each other. Anurag has been awesome at that too. So thank you for that. Um, and yeah, if you know the answer to something somebody asks, feel free to, yeah, to jump in. It's, it's no big deal. We love that. So yeah, it's a, it's a team effort. <laughs> so it takes a village, right? <laughs> um, but thank you again for everybody for uh, joining us today and um, enjoy the rest of your day, evenings, weeks <laughs> and such. It was great to see you. Great to meet you. And we'll yeah, see you later. Thank you everyone. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.